dear students assalamu alaikum today we are going to talk about our course uh, physiology and immunology course code chem 444 and uh, this is our lecture number 2 uh, the topic of today's uh, lecture is biochemistry of urine now the outline for today's lecture biochemistry of urine is we will study about what is urine then we will study about what is urine analysis we will study why sh why shall we do urine analysis or urine analysis why it is important then we will study about the normal constituents of urine because urine is a mixture you know that it consists of there are so many things in it so we will study about what are the normal constituents of urine then we will study about abnormal constituents of urine uh, by abnormal constituents we will get to know that there are different situations in which uh, the constituents of uh, urine gets abnormal and they, they are indicative of uh, different types of diseases so we will talk about that, that in detail so what is urine now we turn our attention to our topic now urine is the byproduct of our uh, uh, fluid secreted by the kidneys transported by the ureter to the urinary bladder and voided through urethra <coughs> so it is the byproduct uh, the fluid that is secreted by the kidneys so this is what is urine now what is urine analysis urine analysis is also called urine analysis it is one of the oldest laboratory procedures in the practice of medicine so it's not uh, only these days that urine analysis is done uh, it is one of the oldest practices uh, for understanding for, for diagnosis of different types of uh, diseases or for monitoring of different types of diseases so this is also known as urine uh, r and m or routine and microscopy uh, is an array of tests performed on urine and one of the most common so there are multiple tests that are performed on urine and these are very common and uh, used for the different types of analysis now why urinalysis because urinalysis helps us to understand uh, gen the general evaluation of a uh, health condition of, uh, of a person uh, it also helps in the diagnosis of diseases or disorders of the kidneys or urinary tract so kidney is a very vital organ uh, our urinary tract is also very important so it can help us in the diagnosis of diseases that are related with these uh, organs uh, it also helps in the diagnosis of other systemic diseases that affect kidney functions uh, it helps in the, uh, the monitoring of patients uh, with diabetes mellitus so diabetic patients can be monitored by uh, through urinalysis and uh, screening for drug abuse can also be done for example sulfonamide or amino glycosides so these are the different types of uh, purpose these are the various purposes that can um, or the different functions that can possibly be attributed to the uh, importance of urinalysis but uh, it includes but is not only limited to this there are multiple other uh, uses of urinalysis as well now so before going into uh, the diseases or uh, things that are associated with uh, urinalysis we need to understand the different constituents uh, that are normally present in the in the urine one of the normal uh, parameter is normal volume of urine output per day it ranges from one to two liter of urine on the average it is like one liter to 1.8 liters so this is the normal amount of urine that is produced uh, by an average human being so if 
for example uh, this amount is very less or very high then the normal it can possibly indicate some pro problem that will need further investigation but normally uh, this is the the range of urine it also varies with the with the external temperature with the amount of liquid intake that we have or uh, the or the or physical uh, status for example by um, by external temperature i mean that when there is a lot of um, heat outside and we are sweating and we are losing a lot of um, a lot of uh, water through sweating there is a possibility that we can uh, get less uh, urine uh, but uh, there but under normal circumstances if a person is getting too much less or too much high then it can uh, it should be uh, looked at now normal color of urine the normal color of uh, urine uh, ranges from pale yellow to deep amber so it can ranges uh, from the from the pale yellow to deep amber depending on the situation of the diet depending on the uh, amount of water intake and other related uh, situations so it can be like this now the normal uh, specific gravity of urine is from 1.001 to 1.0301 so this is the value of the normal amount of specific gravity of uh, urine now pH of normal urine the pH uh, of normal urine ranges from 4.5 to 8.0 on the average it is uh, 6.0 so because as you know that 7 is the uh, uh, pH which is neutral neither acidic nor basic it is 6 so it is slight it can be slightly turned a slightly acidic is it less than seven it is six on the average uh, uh, urine ph is slightly acidic uh, so what is the chief or uh, the major function of urine it excretes uh, waste substances that are produced as a result of the process of uh, metabolism in the uh, uh, in the body so this is the chief function normal calcium ion excreted in urine in, in males uh, because there's a difference between the physiology of uh, male and female slight differences are there so in male uh, the calcium ion excreted in urine is from 25 to uh, 300 milligram per 24 hour specimen while in females it is from uh, 20 to 275 milligram per 24 hour specimen so these and um, these are the slight variations that can possibly be between uh, male and female so on the average these are the values uh, now among other normal constituents of urine we have uh, ammonia excreted per day in lower situation it can be from 10 to 20 micromole per liter of urine uh, and while in higher situation it can be uh, up to 35 to 65 micromole per liter according to the food intake so it can vary so these are the possible value of ammonia that can be excreted by urine per day so there are other non-protein nitrogen NPN substances present in urine um, these consist of uh, all nitrogen constituents of the blood except protein and uh, second one they they are the end products of nitrogen metabolism and may be excreted in the urine so these are the uh, NPN or non-protein nitrogen substances that are normally present in uh, in urine now uh, there is normal uh, level of urea in, in, in blood per day uh, 
this is from 7 to 20 milligram per deciliter or 2.5 to 7.1 millimole per liter. So this is the normal value of uh, urea uh, in blood uh, per day. Now if we take the, the value per 24 hour normal urea level in urine per 24 hours uh, ranges from 10 to 35 milligram per deciliter. This is the normal value of uh, urine per 24 hours. So now uric acid. Uric acid uh, is uh, a waste product normally present in the blood as a result of the breakdown of purines. Uh, you know that uh, purines are broken down uh, uh, in the in the body and uh, it results uh, in uric acid formation and uric acid is a waste product uh, that can be result from the breakdown of this uh, purine now this uh, uric acid if uh, it is excessively uh, present uh, in the body it can cause crystals to form forming the giants and cause a disease that is called gout so this purines breakdown normally occurs in the body slowly and gradually and the uric acid is cleared but in situations where uric acid uh, is not properly excreted in it uh, its build up occur in the giants and it uh, can cause a situation which is called uh, which results in a disease which is called gout so in this situation it can be very painful because it creates several uh, different possible complications. Now, uh, another very important uh, uh, uric acid that is excreted in urine per day normally is less than one one gram per day. So, normal under normal circumstances, uh, it is present or it is excreted in the body, but this amount is uh, very small. A small amount it is normally uh, uh, excreted now another important uh, parameter that is creatinine creatinine is a nitrogenous uh, compound that is formed as the end product of creatine metabolism it is formed in the muscle in relatively small amounts passes into the blood and is excreted in the urine a laboratory test for creatinine level in the blood may be used as a measurement of kidney function in the body. So normally we see that creatinine um, produced and this is how uh, creatinine is synthesized. One creatine, creatine is synthesized from the amino acids uh, glycine, arginine and methionine primarily in the liver kidneys and pancreas and it is transported from there to all the cells in the body via the bloodstream since uh, creatine is involved in all processes that require energy muscle brain and nerve cells receive correspondingly larger amounts now this is the uh, reaction through which uh, this uh, creatinine synthesis can take place. One can see this uh, glycine and then, uh, then L-arginine. Uh, after removal of ornithine, we uh, get uh, guanidinocetate. Uh, and after this, we uh, get this in the subsequent reaction, we get creatine. So this is, uh, it is normally uh, produced in the uh, body. Now, there are situations where, when the amount of uric acid can get abnormal uh, in urine and this, those situations are very uh, important to be monitored. Now, proteinuria. Proteinuria is a specific situation where proteins can are found in the uh, in the in the urine of the individuals urine of healthy individual 
contains no protein or only traces amount so under normal circumstances very uh, uh, normally we don't expect uh, proteins are even if they are there the amount can be in traces however in proteinuria the uh, the protein can pass through kidney tubule to urine in case the damage of kidney tubule so the care uh, the uh, there is a damage to the kidney tubule the urine can pass in uh, urine uh, proteins can be detected in uh, in in urine this is indicated indicative of a particular situation which is called proteinuria now there is another situation called microalbuminuria this is a detection of nephropathy and diagnosis of diabetes mellitus complication it is associated with face or feet abnormal edema due to disturbance of fluid balance in body due to protein loss quantitative and for 24 hour urine uh, in males you can one can expect one to four milligram per deciliter while in female it, it can be three to ten milligram per deciliter while in children it is one to ten milligram per dc letter now there is another situation uh, which is called glycosuria uh, it is a uh, renal threshold of glucose that that it is around 160 milligram per 100 ml in diabetes mellitus uh, characterized by hyperglycemia um, obviously high level of glucose usually associated with polyuria which means the increased volume of urine urine may be light in color so now another situation that can possibly result from uh, abnormal constituents of urine is ketonuria common uh, this situation is common in uncontrolled diabetes mellitus ketonuria is present in the disease situation and diabetes mellitus in case of starvation or in case of omitting for long time its values uh, negative test result is normal small amount when it is found it is less than 20 milligram per deciliter in moderate situation it is 30 to 40 milligram per deciliter while in large quantities it can be higher than 80 milligram uh, per deciliter so now it depends on the on the disease situation or the conditions of the uh, patient that uh, what kind of uh, ketinuria uh, the patient um, have now another situation is hematuria hematuria is the positive result due to normally no pathological cause abnormally uh, stones or uh, tumors so need other confirmatory tests so it is indicative of the need for uh, for uh, uh, for uh, other uh, confirmatory test uh, so this is uh, the two situations in this situation when the color is like this it is indicated of indicative of gross hematuria while in case the color is like this this is uh, a situation which is a uh, kind of microscopic uh, hematuria <laughs> now in another situation called hemoglobinuria mm, the presence of hemoglobin in urine due to rupturing of rbcs can occur and this situation is called hemoglobinuria it occur in malaria and typhoid yellow fever hemolytic jaundice and other types of and other diseases so in some situations we can uh, have hemoglobinuria and and there is another situation uh, which bilirubin uh, or bile can be found and it results from hemoglobin breakdown elevated and actually elevated level is found in, in hepatitis and jaundice uh, average uh, reaction in which diethyl amino benzaldehyde reacts with uro 
balloon region in acid medium to produce a pink color uh, nitrite if detected in cases of abnormal constitution normal urine doesn't contain nitrate but contain nitrites in the presence of bacteria the normally present nitrate in the urine is reduced to nitrite the test is used for screening of bacteria positive tests indicate presence of more than 10 organisms per ml now another situation is called urine leukocytes this test detects any microbial infection in the body positive result is more than five leukocytes uh, high per high power field if you reinstand long term leukocytes lysis and more intense reaction occur false positive occurs with vaginal contamination presence of glucose albumin ascorbic acid large amount of oxalic acid can inhibit the reaction so these are the different types of uh, diseases that are uh, that are related with the abnormal uh, level of uh, uh, urine uh, the urine is a very so from overall from this lecture we can uh, understand that urine is a very important uh, part of the body uh, secretions that can be uh, used for understanding the different diseases uh, that can affect um, the human body and also understanding the normal level of different constitu possible constituents of urine is also very important because uh, this is how it helps us to understand the abnormal situations. I hope you enjoyed the lecture and if you have any question, uh, I will be very happy to answer it. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next lecture.